Hello, you're watching Shalom World News. I'm Dana Villa from Chicago, USA. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. The Holy Father appealed to the religious not to give in to pessimism with regard the lack of new vocations in an aging community. Pope Francis was addressing members of the Clarishanum Institute of Theology of the Consecrated Life on Monday, November 7. The Institute is celebrating its 50th anniversary. Pope Francis asked the religious to pray with him to the Almighty to free them from self-referentiality and from polarizations. He told the members of the Institute that they should not be discouraged by the lack of vocations or with aging. In his address to the members of the Institute, the pontiff said, It is the Lord of history who sustains us and invites us to faithfulness and fruitfulness. He cares for his remnant, looks for mercy and benevolence upon his work, and continues to send his Holy Spirit. The Claritians were established by St. Anthony Claret in 1849, and they are engaged in missionary work around the world. The Claritianum was founded in 1971 as an institute for theology of consecrated life. Amidst the looming energy crisis in Europe spawned by the war in Ukraine, the Catholic bishops of European Union nations have urged solidarity and support for the vulnerable people as winter approaches. The Commission of the Bishops' Conference of the European Union, or Comisi, is appealing to all not to abandon families and persons who are vulnerable or are victims of socioeconomic discrimination. The bishop said the nations should ensure fair access to affordable energy for all, especially the most vulnerable, while not losing sight of the long-term objective of a just and sustainable energy transition. The prelates noted that in the context of the Russian aggression, the EU's overdependence on one oil and gas supplier has led to the weaponization of energy supplies by Russia. They said that this situation has reinforced energy insecurity in Europe and has resulted in soaring prices. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre denied that pro-life activists were being targeted in the Biden administration following the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. This comes amidst clear evidence of impetuous arrests of pro-life supporters. In a press conference, a reporter asked Jean-Pierre about the White House's response to former President Donald Trump's argument on radical Democrats saying they were locking up pro-life activists and persecuting their political opponents. The press secretary denied the claim, saying it was not true. She did not give any comment on what the former president said. In the South American nation of Ecuador, the bishops have appealed to drug cartels to stop the violence and seek the path of conversion. This comes as drug gangs have launched a series of attacks in retaliation against the government's efforts to retake control of the prisons. In the attacks, which included car bomb blasts, several people were killed, including five police officers. The bishop said in their statement that the money that the gangs have from so many dirty businesses is nothing but blood money. Convert, there is still time to not end up in hell. This is what awaits you if you continue this path, the bishops warned them, citing the words of Pope Francis. To crush gang-related violence, President Guillermo Lasso had extended the state of emergency to the province of Santo Domingo de los Saquilas. It suspends for 45 days the right to freedom of assembly. For the first time, a World Women's Rosary will be held on December 8th, the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. Inspired by the Men's Rosary, which spread across the world, the World Women's Rosary aims to defend churches, human life, motherhood, and the family. It will also be an occasion when Catholic women proclaim, We are daughters of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and we want to follow her example. The event will be a public manifestation of the quest for genuine peace, which God alone provides. Representing the Americas, women from the USA, the Dominican Republic, Guatemala, Honduras, Venezuela, Mexico, Nicaragua, Panama, Paraguay, Puerto Rico, and Peru will take part in the event. 
from Africa, Ugandan women are taking part, and from the Middle East, Catholic women in the United Arab Emirates have confirmed their participation. Pope Francis expressed his condolences to the 19 people who died after the plane in which they were traveling plunged into Lake Victoria in Tanzania. The Holy Father assured his closeness to all those affected by the tragedy through a telegram message signed by Vatican Secretary of State Cardinal Pietro Parolin. He also prayed for the souls of the deceased, the rehabilitation of the injured, and the endurance of all concerned during the healing process. The Tanzanian passenger plane Precision Air Flight PW494 crashed into Lake Victoria on Sunday, November 6, killing at least 19 people. The aircraft carrying 39 passengers and four crew members crashed into the middle of the storm while trying to land at nearby Bukoba Airport. The local authorities reported that investigations are going on to find out the cause of the accident. At least 10 people were reportedly killed and many wounded after a suspected Al-Shabaab militant attacked a military base in central Somalia yesterday, November 7th. According to the Defense Ministry, the army successfully repelled the onslaught on the camp, housing both foreign and local forces of Qaib. This village was recaptured from Al-Shabaab last week. The attacks unfolded with two car bombs detonated at the army's outpost, followed by a fierce gunfight between the military and the militants. The militants engaged in a three-hour battle in the region. Although the number of fatalities from the raid was not immediately known, Major Mohammed Farah, a military official in the town of Bado, claimed that at least 10 soldiers and 20 Al-Shabaab fighters died. The Al-Qaeda-affiliated group recently attacked the education ministry in the capital, Mogadishu, killing at least 120 people in two vehicle bombings. Major Archbishop Sviatoslav Shevchuk of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church has condemned the human rights violations by the Russian army in the Eastern European country. During his daily message on the 254th day of the war, the prelate accused the Russian forces of unleashing horrific war crimes. Following the deoccupation of Kharkiv, Donetsk, and Kherson regions, his beatitude claimed that the bodies of innocent people slaughtered and tortured by Russians had been discovered. According to the authorities, bodies of 868 people, including 24 children, were found from these regions. The prelate also decried that the Russian army returned to strike more than 30 inhabited centers of Ukraine, killing civilians and destroying infrastructures. Separately, during a visit to the Vatican, Archbishop Shevchuk handed a fragment of an exploded Russian mine to Pope Francis on Monday, November 7th. The fragment was from an explosive device that demolished the front of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church in the town of Irpin in March. Here in the U.S., the annual collection that supports the elderly religious sisters, brothers, and priests in various parishes will take place on the 10th and 11th of December. The collection, coordinated by the National Religious Retirement Office, will distribute financial aid to the retirement needs of eligible religious institutes. The initiative aims to support nearly 25,000 elderly religious men and women. As Catholic nuns and priests, they served in various institutions and parishes with very little pay and have nothing left when they retire. The U.S. religious communities find it difficult to meet the needs of the elderly religious members and the funds available to support them. The bishops from the U.S. began the collection in 1988 to address this difficulty. Pontifical Charity Aid to the Church in Need will be organizing a campaign to celebrate Masses throughout Spain for the benefactors of the organization who died last year and also for their relatives starting tomorrow, November 9th through the 19th. Forty Masses will be offered for the deceased benefactors to which everyone is invited. 
The Mass will either be in person or through live broadcast. During Holy Mass, benefactors will be thanked for their lives and for every good thing that they have done for the ailing church. In Cambodia, a prominent Christian activist has engaged in a hunger strike at the penitentiary where she is kept. Activist Thierry Seng went on a hunger strike to protest against her incarceration and the abysmal human rights record of the Asian nation. This comes as U.S. President Joe Biden arrived in the country to take part in the ASEAN Leaders Conference. Sang, who is a lawyer and the editor of the Khmer Language Bible, was imprisoned for six years in June on the charge of plotting to depose Prime Minister Hun Sen. Sang began her hunger strike yesterday, November 7, with the support of the Khmer Tavrak Youth Group. Through her hunger strike, Sang hopes to create awareness about the impunity of the government and the utter disregard for the freedom, democracy, and human rights. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us tomorrow. In the meantime, you can visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.